Hello everybody, today we're going to be going over calculated columns, what they are versus measures, when to use them in Power BI, um, and how they can be effective with helping to improve your reports. Um, first of all, to start off, just want to say I'm very new at this, never done anything like this before, but thought I'd get into just making some videos to help teach some people Power BI, so please let me know how I'm doing. Any criticisms, critiques, very, um, very welcome. Want to make sure I'm getting the best kind of instructions out there for people to help, so um, they can just kind of improve their day-to-day -day lives and get out of Excel hell. So let me know how I'm doing. Um, give me some examples if you got any. Um, going to be posting pretty, pretty consistently for a while here. So that's that. Now let's get into calculated columns. So what calculated columns are versus measures is a measure is evaluating its DAX syntax within its specific cell on the page. So, it, so when you're on your report page, each specific, when, when you have a measure, each of these specific items is being calculated in, in its context. So if you filter by some specific client name, it's going to filter that current measure down to that client, right? So, so again, it's this measure is evaluating based on context, whereas a calculated column only calculates based off the table's row value. So it's only looking at the current row that it's on and calculating based off of that. So this, let's say this total weight value was a calculation here of some sort. It's never going to change based off of any filter you have in your report view because it's a calculated column on that table, right? There's nothing that's going to filter it and make it different. It's the value on this table. Whereas measures, measures get filtered and sliced and diced, and then you build on top of those columns, right? So that you can slice and dice them. Whereas again, those columns are what is on the table. It's that values, the table value, and it doesn't get sliced and diced based off of any slicers or anything you apply. Because again, it's in the data on the table. So let's go through some examples of when these might be used um, and, and how they might be helpful. So let's say, so right here we've got a shipping cost, total weight, and number of items. So let's say we want to get the number of items um, each shipment is having or the average weight each shipment, um, the average per unit weight of a shipment. Right, so let's go ahead and essentially just divide our total weight by our number of items so we get the weight per item. Right, So let's go ahead and push the new column button. So we'll select the table that we're on. We'll push the new column button and then we'll just go ahead and type in. This is just essentially the same thing as measures. It's just in a calculated column. So we're still using DAX. Everything's the same. We're just on a calculated column on the table as opposed to a measure. So let's go ahead and type in the name. Let's go weight per item, and we are going to just be dividing total weight, let's do it this way actually, let's go with a divide function, so just divide, we are going to divide total weight, number of items, get the average weight per item, so here we go, each uh, weight per item is 0.2 weight per item. Not sure if that's pounds or what unit that is, but weight per item. Um, so right, so that now this value, we can now build on top of this value and let's say we want to know the average weight per item of a client's orders. Then we would take the average within a measure to get our average value that we're looking for per client. Right, so this is just an example of how we can do a quick um, quick calculated column to then improve our reports measures with building a measure on top of our new column. Um, Going into one of my most valuable times that I usually typically use some calculated columns is with their, their multiple dates and doing some date comparisons from different tables, trying to get some edit history and how long that different activities took. Whenever I do some date differences, um, that's usually when I find myself using a new calculated column on a table. Um, just because I found dates across tables or dates within tables are just a bit tricky to work with within, within a measure context um, to get it to be totally correct to how you want it. So going through an example here with some date stuff and a calculated column here using the order date versus the actual delivery date. Let's say you want to know how long it took for an order to be shipped out and get delivered for clients and what the average client duration is right for some of those delivery dates. Um, is there anybody we need to do better on or somebody we're doing worse with? 
So the way that you can do that is, again, with a measure, it's, it's just a bit difficult to call them out in the right context. So what I usually do is I will put in a measure or a calculated column for these date differences. So on this days to delivery, what we've done is we've just done a date diff function. So let me go through the same thing again. So a date diff function is just taking the difference of days between the start and the end date. So we'll get an order date. Or, so it's a date one, a date two, and then you'll specify the interval. So our date one is going to be our order date. Then we'll go actually delivery date, actual delivery date, and the, our interval is going to be by day. And so if we enter this here, ignore the bad data that is just this dummy, dample, dummy sample data set I generated. So bad dates, ignore those, sorry. Um, let's look at this one that's valid. So we've got an order date in December 27 with a delivery date five days later. And then you can see here, it's counting those days between and gives us five. Um, so again, now we can take this average on this column to see who's getting their orders in a timely manner, who needs to be improved on, are there specific account managers that are responsible for it, what's going on? Um, and again, just increasing that quick value analysis. However, let's say we're doing some analysis on employee activity and we want to see how long it's taking employees to do some activity and we don't want to include weekends we want to know just how long it's taken without weekends that's where you can get kind of more advanced with your dax within the calculated column using a bit different functions so that we can count the number of days and then filter out any type of day we don't want so going through that example what we can use is dates between so if we filter for so what we can do is we can count the rows on our date table. So we're going to be counting days. Essentially, our date table is a date table full of days. Every, every day is a new line item. So we're going to count rows on our date table, which is going to produce us a value of one per each day. But then we're going to filter that count rows measure, calcul measure expression down to just count the number of days, the dates, between our start and our end date. So between, this is our date function, or our date table, and then between our start and our end date. And then we're adding another filter to that, specifying business days is true. So I have a date table um, video out there if you guys want to go back and look at that, how to create this. Very simple, just copy and paste it and you can create it. But with that date table contains is some filters and columns that will specify if it's a working day, if it's a holiday, if it's a business day. And then you can add those filters onto your calculations to filter your calculations down to, again, what you're looking for. So we're looking for just business days, so days to deliver, business days. And again, if we look at these values, now that we can see this value, so that December to January 3rd value that was a 5 on our dated diff calculation, now goes to a 4 because we filtered out those weekends or holidays. So let's say it's the 1st or something, right? It would filter those days out. And now it shows 4. So again, just some easy ways if you can use DAX, very powerful to filter stuff out within your calculated columns the same way that you can do it with measures as well. Um, and so once we've got that, once we've got that calculated column, now we don't need to worry about creating a measure with these two values to compare them and making sure our context is right within the measures value that we're showing. But now we can just build on top of this new measure or this new calculated column to show those values very easily, right? So now we can just take the average of that column that we created to show the average days to delivery per client. So we've got an average days to delivery per, for our clients of 122 days, business days, right? We got to remember our context. We're in business days calculation. And we can see that there are some people that have very long delivery dates. What are we doing there? We got to clearly improve something because on the other side of the coin, we've got people who are making deliveries the same day, right? So again, calculated columns versus measures, they go hand in hand with each other, but some cases you're just going to want to build a calculated column on your table based on the context that you're using. Um, hopefully this helped. Hopefully this was a good kickoff into getting you guys understanding how calculated columns work versus measures. Let me know if there are any questions in the comments. Happy to address them. Um, I will get them answered right away. And uh, again, hope this was helpful. And let me know if you guys have any questions. Talk, talk to you guys on the next one.